Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on uh, your time zone, and also depending if you're watching uh, us live or if you're watching a recording. This is the 33rd session of the second Global Stop uh, Cyberbullying uh, Telesummit. As usual, uh, I'm talking to you from Portugal, from a small town called Rio Tinto in the surrounding areas of Porto, which is the second largest city uh, of Portugal. And uh, my name is uh, Tito de Moraes, and since 2003, I run uh, an internet safety uh, project, and that's how I got uh, interested on the subject of uh, cyberbullying. In 2016, uh, together uh, with my co-authors Sonia Seixas and uh, Luis Fernandes, uh, we wrote a book called Cyberbullying, a guide for parents uh, and educators. But uh, uh, before that, uh, Sonia and Luis had already written uh, another book called uh, Plan Bullying, How to Erase Bullying from Schools which was also published uh, in Portugal. It is a book directed mo mostly to teachers and educators and, and schools. And also they have uh, written another book targeting uh, youth and children, uh, whose title is Say No to Bullying, Don't Let Them Hurt You. This one was also uh, published uh, in uh, Portugal. So this uh, lovely uh, duo, comprised by Luis uh, and Sonia, became a, a trio when uh, we wrote the, the cyberbullying uh, book. And we have also written uh, together a chapter for this book published by the Council of Europe, Bullying Perspectives, Practices and Insights, which was written by uh, Janice Richardson, who was a guest this year, uh, Elizabeth Milovidov, who was a guest uh, last year, and Roger Blemeyer, whom we haven't had yet the, the opportunity uh, to meet. So uh, today, as usual, uh, to help me out uh, in the, the English uh, sessions, I have with me Sonia, my fellow co-author of the Cyberbullying book. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Tito. Hi, everyone. Another day, another night uh, in Portugal. Yes, we, we're approaching we're approaching the final uh, mile of this uh, event. Uh, the final event will take place on uh, October 31st, uh, Saturday. Yes, and it's, it's been quite, uh, quite a month. It's been quite a, quite month. a month. Well, as usual, as usual, we also uh, invite people to uh, comment. So feel free to uh, let us know uh, where we, where you are uh, watching us, where you are following us. Uh, <clears throat> as I, as usual, Sonia is uh, in Santarém. Yes. I yes. can see that her background yes. hasn't changed. Near the first great city, Lisbon. Yes. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> near <laughs> Lisbon. I think. Yep. And uh, so feel free to let us know where you're following us. And also, we're broadcasting to Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, Periscope. So um, you're also uh, free to leave your questions and comments. The host for tonight will be uh, Philippe uh, Cohen. He's the founder of uh, respectzone.org in France. And he is, uh, will be talking uh, with us about how to make your online space respect by uh, design. Hi, Philip. welcome. Hi, thank you for having me tonight. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Sonia. Thank you, Tito. It's a, it's a big pleasure for me. And thank, it, you. It, it, thank you for having uh, accepted our invitation. Exactly. And, and to give us your time, uh, I know it's late already uh, in, in, in France. Thank you for uh, giving us uh, uh, your time. Usually, Philip, we, we start by uh, asking uh, our guests so that uh, they can tell us a bit uh, more about them instead of reading your uh, bio. Can you tell our viewers who Philip Cohen is? <laughs> 
So I am a French uh, advocate educated uh, in France, in the Netherlands, and in the US, and um, mm -hmm. and um, involved in media laws and all sorts of laws. And on the side of my life, I have always dedicated some time to fight against uh, uh, lack of fairness or injustice, which is uh, an obsessive okay. uh, combat for me since the uh, age of. 10. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've always be willing to, to fight like a superhero, except I'm not one. So, so I, I, I try to, to, to be one first with uh, legal ammunitions, like okay. with, uh, <laughs> you know, with uh, legal arguments and um, uh, uh, creativity as well. And uh, so, so I have always been involved in uh, anti racism advocacy. Uh, and, and then at some point, the digital era came and okay. it blew everything up and we had to invent new tools. And this is what I'm trying to do and I will explain how. Okay. Uh, we have people uh, with us. Some of them are shy. They don't, they don't tell us where their following is from. But others are regulars, such as Abilio Carvalho. And he's uh, usually following us from Vila Nova de Gaia, which is a city, a twin city of Porto. Uh, you have the River Douro, Gaia is on one side, and Porto uh, is on uh, the other. The, the other uh, question we also usually ask, so to, to get to know our guests uh, some, somewhat better, is uh, what uh, drove you uh, to, uh, or was there a trigger for your interest in, uh, in in this subject, in intolerance and uh, the in hate speech uh, and respect and, and that sort of thing. So, so um, thank you for, for asking this because it's it's a way to reflect on on your own uh, journey. Um, I, I think that that I can number three triggering effects. Uh, one is. Uh, the kind of historical uh, difficulty with uh, uh, with watching something going wrong and not being able to to push back or to resist to something which is unfair. So, so this uh, absence of education for uh, resisting against uh, in you know injustice, something which is haunting my mind since uh, always. And uh, maybe my uh, psychoanalyst uh, will be able to tell why. Uh, uh, so the, my, the uh, second piece is is more linked to is, uh, uh, you know being a, a parent. So I'm a parent of uh, I'm, a, I'm a father of two uh, grown up uh, young men now. But uh, when I started to work on respect zone, it was uh, at the time when my kids were both in middle school, so they were 10 and 12. And uh, and my oldest kid came to me one day and said that his uh, math professor from uh, French African origin was being um, mocked. And, uh, and uh, there was a, a specific uh, Facebook website group created uh, to make fun of his accent and his uh, skin color and the rest. And this group became to be very popular, even beyond uh, beyond anybody who would have been a student of this professor. Meaning mm -hmm. that it was more like a, a domino effect of uh, we like and share and like and share something that we find fun. <coughs> but here, which was um, not not only fun, it was uh, extremely biased as well. And it was back in the days when kids were on Facebook and. Parents and professor were not on Facebook. Uh, this time has changed now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and 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 when my older son came and say, you know, uh, what should I do? I said, you should tell your friends. Uh, These are still your friends. That it's going to be a big issue for them because no one will be able to ever erase it. Um, and uh, they may got in trouble at some point, so it's not good for their own, you know, life, career, uh, aspirations, and everything. So he went back to them not, in not very motivated way because it's not it's never easy to go back to your friends and 
be the kind of uh, moralist or something. Mm. <laughs> so he, he he took the 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 you know the care to try, and he was completely ostracized ostracized by this group. He was uh, rejected because of that uh, attitude. And also, they were uh, making three arguments, which I, I still keep in mind because it is well, uh, boy, it's for it's for kidding, it's, it's for fun, mm -hmm. fun for womb. Uh, two, it's not that bad because it's only a joke, so it cannot hurt, which is not true either because the prejudice and the mm -hmm. and the, and the pain and the, and the distress is it's very profound, especially uh, for the victims. And three, it's anyway, it's private. Why do you care? So it's like mm -hmm. online, uh, you know, online attack, online threats, online good joke, bad bad jokes, or or, or a breach of the laws is viewed as being private, whatever the audience be, uh, which is a kind of yeah. denial of uh, mass reality. And the third reason why I, I think I got into this battle. Uh, is because at uh, when be just before creating Respect Zone, uh, I created a, a think tank which became a, a non profit, which was to to try to reflect on what should we do uh, when soon the Hitler's Adolf Hitler's uh, manifesto, Mein Kampf, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. was about to go into the public domain of copyright. And mm -hmm. as a militant anti-racist, as a lawyer, as a citizen, I wanted to reflect on what should we do to anticipate this online dissemination of the most uh, uh, peak uh, call for genocide, and uh, which was extremely well followed as a roadmap for crime. Mm -hmm. um, and which was uh, written in 1923 and which came into effect uh, within less than 12 years. Uh, and still now, because it's not only an historical book, still now this book is used to justify mass crimes and su <laughs> supremacist uh, thinking and fake news and uh, and all sorts of uh, bias, which, which are always of the same format. Whatever the mass crime is, there is always the same recipe. You know, the <laughs> recipe being... Uh, uh, you have to express that uh, if you don't delete the presence of the group you want to stigmatize, you will be coked your, yourself. You so, so, so this is the first, this is a paranoid attitude. Mm -hmm. Then the second piece is, yeah, but this, this group, whatever the group is, is not like us. And they are subhumans mm -hmm. and they are like insects and they should be sanitized which is a word which res mm -hmm. resonates a lot these days, sanitized. And mm -hmm. if you take any mass crime with a, you know, Tutsi in Rwanda, if you take the uh, Red Khmer, if you take the, it's always the same bloody, bloody the word story. Uh, yeah. If you take mm -hmm. exactly what, what was done in, uh, in uh, Utuya Island near Oslo with uh, Anders Breivik, when he killed 77 uh, victims uh, almost 10 years ago, yeah. uh, he tried, this man, Anders Breivik, who was a, a, a fanatic uh, Hitler uh, ad admirer, he tried to replicate a kind of subset of Mein Kampf, which, which was called uh, for a European mm -hmm. Republic. And he tried to sell it and to publish it before to justify his uh, theory and crimes, you know, the supremacy mm -hmm. theory that the white uh, race is superior to the other. And so he failed to find a publisher in the UK with UK. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then he, he uploaded uh, the manifesto that he wrote, uh, which was a kind of mishmash of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the Turner, Diary, which is a well-known subset of uh, uh, nationalist U.S. extreme right, uh, further to Mein Kampf, mm -hmm. and uh, and he uploaded it, and four hours later he killed uh, seventy-seven people. Uh, and in many mass crime, you would find this book. And so, at the time, I was working with uh, also with the French government, 
to see what kind of warning of educational warning we should put in in in, in front of such uh, online display of uh, peak uh, call for hatred and crime because it's there's no way you can delete it from the online world and no nothing can mm -hmm. be deleted yeah. especially if it is a big element of the history of europe uh, so mm -hmm. censorship will not play so if it is not going yeah. to be to be accepted then we have maybe like in, in the martial art to to try to use it as a uh why is it to wrong deflect to this to, to deconstruct Out maneuver exactly and to it's like a sumo exercise um yeah. and Aikido, sumo, you know, uh, Sun Tzu, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and 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 the and the idea was to to try to see, but but how can we differentiate websites uh, which are educative websites as opposed to Mein Kampf fan websites? Because you would yeah. find Mein Kampf on both websites, except there is no there was no way at the time to differentiate which was pro Mein Kampf or against Mein Kampf. Mm -hmm. Both of yeah. them having a, a different reason to exhibit this uh, document and to criticize it or to magnify it. And sometimes it's not even easy to understand what is being done. So we were thinking of labeling the website, which are, which are taking the pledge to say, we will criticize it and we will show it to the world to show it how toxic it is. And we mm -hmm. try to invent a label with the government, and we couldn't find one really, because it was the name of my former, the former name of Respigon was a, the Hate Prevention Initiative. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and the logo was not nice. And so, so at some point I was with my kids and we were driving in the, in a foreign country, uh, the, the three of us, and it was a long ride. And, and they were, you know, the, I I saw that they would watch DVDs on the back seats and mm -hmm. with the player, I, and they never saw anyone. And they kept on asking me questions. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. And the question is, what are you working on? And say, I'm working on trying to find the the right labels that you would want to use at your age online and identify it as a cool label. Uh, and so I said, why don't you help me? And then we brainstorm like uh, in a you know uh, advertising agency uh, in the car. Uh, it's like a road movie, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we came out with uh, uh, words that could be understood in Portugal, in Brazil, in Japan, in Kazakhstan, and having the same meaning relating mm -hmm. to online permissivity uh, uh, and how we want to construct. Uh, digital destinations that looks like us and long story short i know it's not short but uh, we came to okay. two words that are mm -hmm. that have the same meaning it's wherever you are on earth uh, at least on earth respect and zone which are words that you cannot twist because uh, many many words of the uh, tolerance human right anti-racist anti-homophobia anti-grossophobia uh, mm -hmm. semantic are fragile and easy to twist and to disintegrate mm -hmm. in a way. Even the word tolerance is disintegratable in the sense that mm -hmm. it's depending on, on, on your culture, on the literature you have read, uh, each word can, in fact, anti-racism is a difficult word. Because there is no race, so why do you want to fight against racism? I mean, it's because it's, it's like keeping the world that you want to fight in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, I can go for you know for for a long time about why it was useful to find a positive, and I'm going to come to this concept, a positive concept as opposed to a negative concept. Negative concept uh, it's not yeah. it's not to fight cyberbullying. But PT, I'm sorry to to mm -hmm. take this as a kind mm -hmm. of uh, test case. It's, mm -hmm. it's what we are looking for as a project, not as a mm -hmm. counter project. And to define mm -hmm. our project as what we want as opposed as what we don't want. Because it's much mm -hmm. more difficult in these days, especially with the, with the millennials, to gather attention and motivation on something you don't want. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be yeah. bullied. 
So sure. spending your life and your energy on bullying, which is what you fight against, can be bizarrely toxic. So the idea would be, mm -hmm. what are we looking for that holds our foul together uh, without being too candid as well and sees how we can to respect it. And that's how the the symbol was uh, uh, born, the, the 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 heart made with the with the hands. Well, in fact, if you look at it, and you can maybe mm -hmm. show the presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you look at the symbol, mm -hmm. the two hands are not the, from the same body, because typically yeah. when you have two okay. hands are the same from the same color. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are not from the same color means that you can design respect being more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, and why blue and white? Because blue and white are the colors of the internet. Uh, more, mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. mostly, if you take most of the of the social media buttons, mm -hmm. most of them are blue or were blue and white. The new mm -hmm. ones would be less like blue and white. But if you take LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's only and blue. also, if you take uh, symbols like the UN, UNICEF, uh, they also tend to be uh, in this the United story. Nation colors. And yeah. and mm -hmm. and to, to be honest, I mean, there's, there have been many studies about colors and the neuroscience mm -hmm. and the mind, and and blue and white are linked with the colors of internet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it has been historically the colors for permissivity, connection, mm -hmm. being better together. Which is exactly what it mm -hmm, failed mm -hmm. to be these days, and okay. this is why we have to re to repair to repair the machine. Okay, Philip, uh, uh, I know, and that, that's the the, the next uh, question uh, is what you have been doing in order to to promote uh, respect zone, in order to promote respect online, and you have a presentation for us. But give me just a minute to acknowledge people that have joined us. Claudio Moraes is joining us from Alijó in the Douro uh, region. Uh, Maria Leonor uh, Silva is joining us from uh, Almada. She, both of them have been joining us uh, fairly uh, regularly. I like the logo. Uh, Claudia the logo Moraes I says, our world. <laughs> you, sorry? No, I, I, I like the heart, which was a profile picture sculpture she was posing next. Oh, yeah, this one. It's yeah. a kind of you uh, have, you, you have allusion an to <laughs> for heart. Uh -huh. uh, Claudia Murray is saying our world needs more people like you, obsessive in the fight against injustice and uh, racism. La, la lucha and... continua. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and Rui Manuel is joining us from uh, Santarém, and he says "Boa noite," which is "Bonsoir," uh, good evening uh, in uh, Portuguese. So I'm going to bring the the, the presentation. Oh, and Carla Salles is also joining us from uh, Carcavelos, which is uh, uh, in the surrounding areas uh, of uh, Lisbon. Uh, so I'm going to bring up uh, your uh, presentation, and uh, feel free to 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 start. Okay, and uh, so 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 I am the one to to, to move the slides. To move the slides. Yes, yeah. You move the slides. You have to uh, click the the PowerPoint window, and then you can move them either okay. with the. Uh, arrow keys on your keyboard or by clicking the arrows on powerpoint at the bottom yeah, because for any reason maybe i should start again to to share it because i cannot move the slides okay you know what i'm going to okay. start sharing and to share again okay no problem Meanwhile, I'll let people know that um, we're broadcasting to Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope, and they should feel, um, if they want to ask you any questions or make any comments, they should feel free to, to do so. Can you move the slides already? 
Yes. Have you? Do you see my second slide? Yes, the second slide. Yep. Okay. So, so yes, it's a mix of English and French, but anyway, no respect problem. zone makes sense in French, makes sense in English, and it's funny how uh, people pronounce it different manner, but it is the same concept. Mm -hmm. uh, in French, you would say respect zone. Uh, mm -hmm. in English, uh, respect zone. Um, uh, so it's a non-profit, it's a French-based association, and we have, uh, you know, we have been able to, to have some uh, correspondence or ambassador, and we're going to come to the, uh, to the news of the day about Portugal at the end of this pre presentation, if you bear with mm -hmm. us. Uh, and we have opened uh, uh, a small representation in, in New York, uh, quite of a, of a sub substantial one in Brussels and one in Lausanne right now. And uh, we are also providing some uh, services in, um, and, and, and activities in London. Um, so, uh, and this is something that came out when we discussed about uh, the preparation of this presentation tonight for you. It is what we are doing in France with the French law against bullying that was quashed by the French Constitutional Court last uh, last uh, spring just before just during the uh, uh, lockdown uh, mid mid spring the french constitutional court con you know considers that the french uh, the french bill to try to fight against uh, online uh, hate uh, which was trying to replicate in france a german model on how to uh, uh, imposed to the key platforms to uh, put down, to take down uh, what has been flagged uh, to them as being manifestly illicit, which is a legal context where, which is where there is no gray zone. And this has been viewed as being uh, abusive by the French Constitutional Court uh, in terms of uh, value of the fine, which was up to 4% of the turnover of the companies for largest uh, platforms. And this was also viewed as being difficult because probably also it's difficult to rely upon the platform itself to decide, as opposed to a judge, what is manifestly illegal and what is not. Uh, and uh, but, but there has been a couple of uh, survivances of this law. And one of them is, uh, you know, item uh, bullet point number two here, which is the uh, setup and erection of the online hate observatory in France under the um, uh, hosted by the French media regulator, which is the equivalent of the UK Ofcom. And in France, it's called the Conseil uh, uh, Supérieur de l'Audiovisuel CSA, uh, which is a res highly respected media watchdog in France. And this is within this uh, structure that this newly set up uh, body, uh, which is supposed to do more than observing. It's supposed also to, to try to reflect on what are the tools, uh, what are the uh, concept, and also uh, what, what, what kind of prevention and educative tools we want to set up. And uh, this is something which is uh, just starting. Uh, we have been appointed as part of the 15 key NGOs of the country to, uh, to, to tackle this type of issues. Uh, you have many reps of the government in France uh, sitting there from uh, six or seven uh, ministries. You have a couple of independent uh, uh, administrative bodies which are sitting and also a couple of experts as well. <coughs> and we are proud to be part of this first uh, batch of uh, members. Uh, we have also been able to work with the EU Commission uh, because it's very difficult to work uh, on an isolated manner, and this is not uh, what we want to do and what we find effective. So the idea is as much as we can, and this is why I'm so glad to be able to team up with you, Sonia and Tito, today, which is to to uh, to construct bridges and ties with other expert and good willing uh, uh, battlers or heroes or heralds as you are. Uh, so the third point is to is, is, is also something which we have created this year. So the respect zone is in existence since 2014 now. And we started our activities as being part of the French uh, online gaming huge fair gathering almost half a million 
kids in France at Port de Versailles every year. In fact, these days was supposed to be the opening this year. Uh, of, of course, unfortunately, we cannot do it at the Port de Versailles, which is the biggest, largest gathering of gamers, online gamers, video gamers, fans. It's called Paris Games Week. And we have been elected since 2014 as being the uh, corporate social responsibility cause for the sector of, of video games in France. Uh, even though we're a very small NGO, and this is how we started to, you know, to to have a, a booth at the fair, and from the booth we then developed the campaign because we we had the chance to meet with a creative agency. The creative agency helped us to create some content, which I'm I'm going to show you, and the content was able to be uh, on a pro bono mode again, uh, reaching out the main French broadcasters like TF1, France Television, Orange, Canal Plus. And thanks to this exposure, mm -hmm. this logo became overnight almost something which was presented as being effective as a tool for kids and parents to think twice before they, uh, you know, they, they, they want to ignore the activities of the kid online. Uh, and maybe we can show, if you will, Tito, the first uh, video of this campaign that we released a couple of weeks after yes. the, the, the birth of uh, Respect Zone. So it's a campaign which we called uh, One Minute of Silence Against Cyber Violence. And this, is, this was, in fact, the first campaign in the history of advertising in France where a TV spot got mute, silent. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons is because, and you, you can start the video since it's silence, it, it, okay. it's silent. Why? Because the, when when you when you get hurt you, in the schoolyard, we won't be able to hear you while while the video is okay. playing. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to. Shall I stop sharing? Or? Oh, actually, we can hear you. Actually, okay. we can hear you. And so, so it's called one one minute of silence against cyber violence, and and what what was uh, topical in this uh, advertising is this campaign, and this this is a French version. Uh, is the fact that when when you suffer from cyber violence, uh, it's like being a big sign. So what it says is Happy Mother Day, ugly dog ugly bitch and mm -hmm. then it says imagine mm -hmm. what your kids already see and 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 express online uh watch out mm -hmm. and uh think of the tools which is called respect zone to prevent cyber bullying the cyber homophobia and, and the rest um <laughs> and this uh, happy mother day ugly bitch which is a way people you know kids talk to each other without realizing the violence of the content of what they are exposed to and what they send to the others. And this is a kind of double uh, way issue. Uh, and the concept of respect and developing the respect uh, attitude is also a way to develop the attitude of uh, self-respect first. Because when you hear the word respect, you think, as much as the respect you owe and the respect you want to be owed. So this is a magic mirror word, which is why maybe the two mm -hmm. ends are like in a mirror in a way, and uh, with a different shade. Uh, and this, uh, this this approach to to have chosen a word which is a kind of empathy accelerator, which is usually the word that people with little vocabulary would put first. So usually the less vocabulary or lexical number of words you use, the more respect would go up. Because it's kind of uh, like, a, like a suitcase uh, tool to put everything that you find positive. You, know, you, you should respect my mother, my religion, my, you know, my vicinity, my neighborhood, my friends, my... Mm -hmm. I, my suitcase, my body, my sound, my uh, my my me, in a way. 
and uh, uh, and 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 ma many many people who are also getting violent is also because they are facing some respect difficulty with themselves or they were not respected. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not a, a shrink, but you see what I I mean with that. So so yes. this is this this, this campaign self respect. Yeah, and and lack this, of this self respect. Got, yeah. Exactly, got such a big traction and a big. Uh, reach in France that we got called by schools who said we were looking for years about something, a tool which is universal, which is not linked to a religion, to a gender, to a sexual mm -hmm. preference, but something which is gathering my kids in my school and we are missing it, especially not only online, because typically we are working right away for online threats. But the schools, and this, is, this was schools based in Brittany, and they, and they started to say, can we use your logo in the school because we want to protect and sanctuarize the place of education? And we said, uh, well, we need to change the charter because uh, as I will show you, uh, the, the, the beauty of this innovation is to, is to rely upon this charter. And the charter here is that mm -hmm. you, you can read in Portuguese on our website, respectzone.org, uh, and in uh, 18 languages. It's extremely simple. It's a one pager, as you see. And, uh, and this is a main tool because if you see the label on Tito's website or Sonia website or profile picture, it, there is a meaning, legally speaking, that if you see this brand, because it's a trademark, it's a real brand, which is a property of the NGO uh, in, in the world. And if you see this brand, it means that you commit and you pledge to comply with this contract. So sorry to be a lawyer here, but uh, so, and article one says, if you see this logo <laughs> uh, and, 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 and we extended it to the, physic, to the physical uh, space, to go beyond the digital space because the digital space and the physical space mm -hmm. is a space. Uh, and, and this is a kind of construction of the yeah. mind to believe that you have two logic, two rules, two, two, two rationals uh, mm -hmm. once you go out from the screen. In fact, it's all about the same world. And offline and online Absolutely. is connected. Uh, and so we amended Article 1 saying that uh, respect on logo can also be put in physical spaces for the benefit of the schools. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we have had uh, over the last five, six years, uh, more than 70 schools who have raised their hands and say, can we use it? And then we would come to them or we would not come to them, we would adapt to them. And what we have developed is a, is a, is a guideline, like a, like a book to, to, I'm going to show you what we, yeah, a book. And, and here you, you can see, what we do in schools can be small schools from primary. I mean, typ <laughs> typically we, we are called from uh, schools with scholars from the age of uh, 10, 10, 11, which is typically what we see as being the average age when uh, kids get their first uh, uh, cell phone uh, or access to, to the internet. And, and we also work with uh, superior schools or management schools or universities. Mm -hmm. And we have been asked uh, this year to open the first uh, law mm -hmm. clinic in France with a public state, uh, well-known, uh, famous uh, University of Economics named Paris Dauphine, which is part of uh, Paris uh, Sciences et Lettres uh, group. And they have asked us to, to set up uh, the first uh, human right, uh, which uh, we, have, we have called the uh, digital clinic for uh, human rights uh, at Paris Dauphine. Uh, in French, it's uh, uh, Clinique Juridique des Droits Humains Numériques. So uh, human right uh, for the digital space. And what we are going to start mm -hmm. with them this month, by the way, is to have uh, the clinicians, like in an hospital, help our legal task force to help out 
victims and bystanders of uh, mm -hmm. cyber violences. And if so, when, when you say clinic, is that some sort of uh, a workshop? Um, no, man, it, it's more than a workshop. It's a uh, uh, it's for a master degree low students okay. highly selected because this is one of the best university on in the country for economics and law uh, studies uh, so there are 30 uh, okay. students selected out of 1000 applicants and once they are selected for one year one full year they have to choose one of the two clean law clinics one is business law and the other one is the respect zone one and uh, half okay. of the cast has been able to join ours. And during uh, almost a full year, they will be part of the... It's like to be a, a, a young uh, intern in a law firm or in the legal department. Okay. And Except you have how, only how one, many were, one how was client, which is respects on... Oh, sorry, what is your question? How how many hours does that uh, entail? Oh, it's uh, it's it's I think it's three hours per week, uh, mm -hmm. and in in the end we are grading the students, and it's part of the yearly grade. So it's not an option; it's part of the curriculum. Okay. So it is a okay. respect zone, a law mm -hmm. clinic for digital human rights, and it is the first of its kind. Uh, uh, and and very, and we are very interesting. And and we have a, a program for for them, and they are going to focus mm -hmm. on uh, on three items. One is to set up uh, guidelines for victims and bystanders, meaning the people who are watching, mm -hmm. the, uh, in different sectors where we, as a, a respect zone, where we where we uh, entertain activities. Uh, so one one of the uh, so yes this is a legal initiative so one one sector being at school so at schools we already have a guideline which is and we have transformed mm -hmm. it into a flyer and we would be very in, uh, interested to to adapt it and to localize it for portugal thanks to our um, rising partnership <laughs> the mm -hmm. second sector is a sector of the sport activities because uh, Respect Zone has been selected uh, uh, two months ago by the French Ministry of Sports to be the, mm -hmm. uh, the expert for uh, training uh, against cyber violences for all the sports centers of the country which are organized by the state for young athletes, uh, sport trainers and sport professors. And during a year, we have been commissioned to train all the uh, Ministry of French Ministry of Sport ecosystem uh, about uh, how to prevent cyber violences. Uh, and for and okay. for that, we are going to ask to the clinicians at uh, in in our law clinic to help putting out uh, guidelines uh, which are going to adapt to the sport environment. So that when we go okay. and train the sports centers, we can go and bring and, and refer to our online page of what are the guidelines and what are your rights if you suffer with this machine online. If you suffer, it means that you have rights. Mm -hmm. And if you have rights, you should know that your rights and how to, to, to protect yourself and what not to do to hurt someone else. Absolutely. Philippe, uh, we have uh, uh, more comments here. Uh, Claudia Moraes uh, was saying, uh, let me bring it up. Sorry if I misunderstood your idea and I'll change the words to be a positive concept. And I prefer and believe in this one too. Love, respect, justice and empathy. This is because she said... Early, our world needs more people like racism. So she complimented with this uh, uh, other uh, comment in order to be uh, more in line uh, with what you've been uh, presenting and what you've been uh, saying. 
and uh, she also said uh, um, regarding the video, amazing the way you put things in a so simple and positive way using silence instead of noise. I believe that less is more. Yeah, which is exactly the, the concept of, of this campaign in 2015. Campaign which was awarded uh, the grand prize in France for advertisement for pro bono cause, by the way. Great, and Great. we reach uh, many people. Uh, but if 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 you want to to continue with, uh, uh, do, do you have more to report or? No, not not uh, currently. So, 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 no, but let uh, us. Uh, I'll in, let people the, know. They feel free to ask any questions they have. Absolutely, and in the interest of time, I feel free to should, continue. We should uh, show and exhibit uh, and roll the unicorn versus. Uh, 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 haters campaign. It's called Unicorn versus Haters. And without any further ado, it's in English. Yes. And you're you're going to roll it out mm -hmm. for us, please. It's a respect zone campaign dated 2016. Try to put teenage haters in front of a traditional anti-bullying campaign. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't care less and cyber violence is still on the rise. That's why Respect Zone harnessed the power of unicorns to create unicorns versus haters. The unique moderation tool that transforms every insult posted into ridiculous kaiwai emojis. It doesn't only block cyber violence in real time, it challenges something that is very sensitive to the haters, their ego. To avoid looking cheesy, they have to moderate themselves. Even better, if they don't, they give Respect Zone high visibility, harnessing users' comments as awareness messages about the serious consequences of bullying. First launch on Melty, with its 6 million unique visitors a month, the results were awesome. 100% fewer insults during the operation. Increase of 175% of visitors on the Respect Zone website with an average age of 14. Thousands of free media cover. L'association Respect Zone. Licorne contre haters. On soutient les licornes. And a debate that has been completely revived in France. That gives haters lots of good reasons to be pissed off. So hate, this is great. hate disconnected, as you see, and we our job is to mm -hmm. disconnect hate without getting into censorship. And this is our main challenge: is is how to, not to be perceived wrongly for what we are not. We are the contrary of censors, mm -hmm. which is the kind of easy uh, grievance you can make against any uh, anti cyber violence mm -hmm. uh, forces, which is oh, you want to to do all well again. You want to censor us, 1984. And uh, and this is why we have developed many mm -hmm. campaigns every year to say that we are uh, uh, freedom of speech liberators. Because how can you sustain uh, a democratic conversation? How can you open to a debate in a world of hyperviolence? Violence is a censor. Uh, respect is a dissensor tool and this is why we are trying to 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 take another door than to go as the usual stuff you know uh, against homophobia against anti-semitism of course we are against it because it's in the charter and the charter is clearly saying what a respect zone is and what a respect zone is not it's a it's a legal definition and the and the idea and we, we do it in school and we could do it in portugal in brazil in anywhere on earth is to say uh when you get if you take the example of a school or a company and if everybody signs the same on the playing level field same contract for everyone there's no contract for the professor that is different than the contract for the students right? or the parents right. everybody signs after each back to school time everybody on the same signs, page same page and same rights and same obligations. In, uh, three, three years ago, there was a law that was passed in France by the French Ministry of Education 
to ban this in schools at the in school year. Yes, it was very spoken about in Portugal. Yeah, but you, you know what was the issue? It was a law applicable only to scholars, not to professors. So okay. how, in in 2016 or 17, how do you uh, make enforceable and popular a regulation if it is not equalitarian? especially in a world where exemplarity should be paramount to every message that is provided. And exemplarity, <laughs> if the exemplarity is, is, is not in the design of the norm, it doesn't play well. Uh, exemplarity is probably Absolutely. what is missing the, the most these days, especially when, when you have country chiefs, which are counter examples of, in terms of bullying or in terms of hatred speech. If you open the, the TV or radio or the newspaper, you open and you see that usually the top head of the country is usually the biggest bully you can think about. And that doesn't help <laughs> yeah. us as educator to say what you should do because your kids are going to say, but this is not what yeah. our president is doing. So what do you want yeah. me to do? Mm -hmm. and Question of role model. Yes, exemplarity and role model. Um, so, so this is why we have a lot to work on when exemplarity is um, is 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 a failure. Uh, so, if, if I want just to complete uh, this yes. presentation, yes, let me just say that Carlos Salus said uh, that uh, she loved it regarding the the latest spot that we have seen. And uh, Claudia Murai says, I love it, very intelligent idea. And Edith Utete, she's following us from uh, Zimbabwe. And she was also oh. a, a speaker who gave us an overview of the situation uh, in, uh, in Africa. Um, so uh, do you want me to uh, show another video? Uh, you have muted yourself. You don't have so, your mute. Sorry. So, so this okay. is uh, one of the recent ones we did last year because we were uh, uh, elected in France as being the laureate for uh, a big program which selects one NGO per year for Facebook. And, uh, and we were able to select a, an agency and publicists were selected. And, and we have proposed for the uh campaign against bullying a, a campaign named stop harassment so i'm going to let you watch this one mm -hmm. do you do you want to to show this video the one that is on on your presentation right no 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 uh, no no please it is the, the last video that you have in your machine sorry the short the third one yes okay okay yes, please okay sorry So, so this goes very fast. Why? Because it's an Instagram setup. And we uh, mm -hmm. converted it in a TV campaign. And we're able also to convince all the French cinemas to release it until COVID uh, closed down the cinemas in France last March. But, but at first, it was an Instagram campaign where the concept is that anyone with his finger can stop harassment by push, pushing mm -hmm. the the screen and touching the screen so that you can understand what the harassment was and what you have seen and we have taken three uh, actors uh, one young young man uh, with a mixed gender a young lady nice lady but which was harassed for being a, a young girl and the third one is a, is is a young man with a, with a little bit of overweight the three and 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 what we have shot, and it was like a super production thing, is is shooting in a French school and seeing what they what they face during a full year span, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. each each one, but in an accelerated mode. And when 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 the kids were exposed to this campaign, they said, "But this is exactly what I see every day." Mm -hmm. And the point is, how do you stop it? And how do you come to 
to to help with the tools of respect zone and how do you do you do you take this as a kind of school project to organize debates to uh, you know to to have a uh, vote and referendum in the school to 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 think where shall i put the logo meaning where should we put more respect online and offline especially in the places of the school where it goes easily very bad for instance so in, in the typical partnering schools, they would mm -hmm. organize debates and votes with ambassadors. And, uh, and this is what has proven to be extremely uh, efficient as well. Uh, so, so, so this is the kind of initiatives that we are doing. But, but I see that time is going very fast. So, uh, so maybe what yes. I would like to, to, to end with is to, is to talk about also... You stop uh, sharing your presentation. Yes. Yeah, because okay. it's time. Yeah, uh, and and it's to so, so this was uh, the kind of tools and videos that we are offering. Uh, so why joining Respect Zone? Because it's it's something which doesn't only apply to schools but to companies. So now we work a lot with law firms, with companies, and we have set up this uh, legal task force. So in each country where we work, and we want to do it in Portugal very soon with you, Sonia, and with Tito, is to mm -hmm. gather also legal pro bono law firms to help with the best talents to help the victims and the witnesses of cyber violence. Because there is a real need to know what is my right when I suffer uh, online. And this is something which is not easy to understand. And this is why I would urge all of your uh, listener to you know, to take interest in what we are doing, to try to help us to 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 do what we want to do with uh, uh, cyberbullying.pt, which is to you know this is an app that we are developing with uh, uh, the law clinic here, with the uh, French Ministry of Sport and with the uh, French government, uh, and uh, and the idea is really to get into. Um, into in, you know to expand the respect zone and to expand it you know the next step for us is really to be extremely proud to be able to partner with you guys so that we can uh, uh, provide the best uh, reach of our tools uh, where they are needed so it and it will not be for us to tell you what is needed in portugal but it's more for us to say this mm -hmm. is what works in other countries why don't you try to localize it and see what works and what doesn't work and how you want to 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 make it evolve so that it works well in your uh, culture or with uh, with the stakeholders you are working with or the educators or the schools and this is exactly what we want to do and we are very proud to announce it is the first premier exclusivity worldwide that cyberbullying.pt and respect zone wants to to engage each other together for co-fighting in Portugal uh, with our tools. Mm -hmm. So we are very and, happy and, that and will be, excited. That, that will be uh, an announcement that will go to, to the press uh, today. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, the media will report on it uh, tomorrow. Um, Abilio Carvalho is saying, uh, excellent presentation, extremely educational and with examples. Um, in this pandemic, we can have the opportunity to change the vision of society and respect for others. Congratulations to Philippe Cohen. And mm -hmm. also, uh, Claudio Moraes saying, we want this in our country, in our schools and in our homes. Tito, Sonia, and Luis are the best persons in our country to work with. Thank you, uh, Claudia, for those uh, nice uh, words. We also uh, want to, and, and that's one of the ideas also to, to bring in people and make it this not only a national thing, but uh, uh, a global uh, event is yeah. to learn with others. Uh, and uh, also to um, create synergies uh, with projects in uh, uh, other countries. I imagine these are your uh, media contacts. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. This, 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 this is our, our 
a very recent mm -hmm. but permanent team. So uh, over the last six months, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of counterintuitive because it was during the pandemic outbreak, but over the last six months, we have decided to go against uh, the sadness of the of the pandemic outbreak, and we and we yes. professionalized the respect zone with two uh, permanent uh, hires. Can I ask two questions? Please. Philippe. Sure. Um, thank you for your presentation. And uh, it was very interesting and um, insightful. And I want to, I, I want to ask you uh, two, two questions. Um, first, how, how to set up online respect zones? And on the other hand, what about offline spaces? Uh, how to how do you work to make them also uh, secure? Yeah, so uh, it's 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 a very open question. So mm -hmm. uh, online, the idea is that once you see the label, which is uh, referring to the charter, charter is uh, like a constitution, mm -hmm. like the constitution of of the respect zone country, meaning that if you see this label, it's like uh, like the minimum standard we are, that that the the person in charge or the company in charge of the of the space online space mm -hmm. is going to commit to comply with, yeah. meaning that if you and, and and this is this is a magic and, and I explain it in, in in the book I just displayed here, which is called uh, Internet versus Internet Hate Plea for Respect Fifty Proposals to Detox Social Media is is the fact that when you see this is yeah exactly if you see this uh, label and if you don't comply you expose yourself mm -hmm. to be reminded by the the owner of the tr uh, uh, non-profit trademark mm -hmm. that you are in breach of the of the of the charter why because we have uh, registered as a trademark not only the logo but also the charter, it's called a collective uh, certification trademark, which is part of the trademark laws all over the world. And we are leveraging the trademark regulation and legislation, which is one of the best success of international law from the history of the legislative and the law history. So there is one piece of the law which is working well internationally, which is trademark laws. I.e., if you, uh, you know, for instance, if Sonia Sexas is registering her own trademark in the world, and if someone wants to imitate and to copy your trademark, you are going to be upset, and you can sue wherever you want, thanks to the Madrid Convention. Mm -hmm. uh, that's since 120 years. This is a kind of dream legislation for the internet uh, re regulator, in a way. This is something, this is like the grail that nobody has found for internet laws. It's one law applicable worldwide which works. Uh, and there is no debate, meaning that if you see respect zone on a website, and the, web and the website is violent and not in line with the charter, you just call the, the NGO and say, you know, what is happening? And we are, we are going to tell you, have you talked to, to this website uh, person in charge that they are putting the logo and not complying? Yes, no. If you have tried and you fail, then we are going to protect our brand. So we are leveraging trademark laws to the benefit of human rights. So it's private law helping out human rights. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's just to take two different corpus of laws that never spoke together and say, now you should speak because you have a lot to share together. And we just connected the dots. That's what a lawyer is supposed to be, it's to, to connect the dots in a way, because you have uh, hundreds of codes and laws and legislation which do not speak together. And this is why we set up this... Uh, legal task force in each country where we work, where we, we gather people from privacy laws, IP laws, image law, criminal law, family law, and we say, why don't you work together 
since you have great brains and you want to fight against cyber hate, you're, 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 each, each of you is the best expert of your domain. They all come from international law firms and, but, and, and they all are very upset about cyber violence. So we say, why don't we go to find a solution with your own skills? And this is how we came to this idea. Uh, and, and to your second piece of your question about offline space, it's much more difficult offline to say, you breached my trademark. That doesn't work well. Mm. <laughs> Except <laughs> if you are uh, a teenager uh, and you are 14 years old and you go to a school with, with, which has signed respect zone charter every year, there is a reminder that is a school of, I don't know, of Porto, you know, the public school of Center Porto is a respect zone affiliate, meaning that there is some debate about the affiliation to the, the sign of to respect values in this school. Uh, and there is an incident, for instance, uh, there is a, like what happened to my kids. There is a website to, you know, to, to try to slander uh, a social uh, history professor. And they re replace his face by a monkey. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not going well and, and right. And you want to, you want to, to put a stop to this type of abuse, which is uh, which is a start of a uh, breach of the laws. And it's much more easy to say, but wh why do you do this in the context of a respect zone school? Especially if each student, if each professor, each parent, each employee of the school, every September of the year, signs up with his own you know, pen, I commit to comply with a respect zone charter. It's much more easy to oppose it mm -hmm. in case of an incident than to say, "Don't you know about the you know Portuguese law of uh, you know criminal laws and mm -hmm. press law and internet law?" And uh, you have to to guess it and to assume that the kids aged 14 is going to to embrace and to know all everything about internet law. That's not possible. Except mm -hmm. this law is very simple, and this, usually we 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 ask also. Uh, a co-construction exercise to the ambassador and the and the students of each schools to come with their extended uh, charter of what is the uh, augmented respect zone charter of my school. So let's say my school is called the Tito de, de Moray mm -hmm. School of Porto. There, there will be easily a Tito de Moray's extended charter, which will be built by the, by the students. So it's not only they sign it, but they are legislator of what is a law of respect. Because everybody has, a, has an idea of what means the right to be respected. respected. Even someone yes. you think there is no debate with this person because he's, he's, he's a bully or he's a violent guy or he's, uh, or he's close to any contact with. But if you say, but what do you, how would you define what is take to be respected? you will always get an answer. <laughs> Philip, as you say, time is uh, flying by. We are already over uh, an hour. Carlos Saldi is saying, thank you, Philip. Love your work. Let's change our world into a, a better place. And uh, I, I would pose you uh, another question would be, OK, so what's the difference between uh, your tools uh, and other uh, tools that are uh, available uh, in, in the marketplace. So I, I'm not here to sell tools. So I, I can say you know, so there is no difference. They're all alike. No, uh, we have nothing to sell. That's my first point. We we, we you know, I do it on a pro bono manner mm -hmm. after hours, which is why I like this timing of the day. By the way, um, no, we to to be more serious. Uh, we found out after six years that we are the only uh, initiative that is indistinctive of the of the causes we combat for. I uh, universal universality, secularism, legal expertise, which is very unique to respect zone, uh, and we mm -hmm. adapt also with culture from countries which are not democracy, 
and which could be even theocracy. Mm -hmm. Because Respect Zone has okay. been designed to please the First Amendment of the US Constitution about freedom of speech, the French mm -hmm. crazy concept of secularism, laïcité, which cannot be translated even in French. Uh, and it's also adapts to monarchy, theocracy, countries where uh, the, the Bible or the Quran is part of the Constitution. Because to mm -hmm. the word respect means a lot in biblical sense as well. Sense. Uh, yeah. and, and we have each word of this small chapter, and I urge you to read it, mm -hmm. has been designed to be as short as efficient, which is one of the most difficult things for a, a, for a lawyer. <laughs> for a lawyer and a legislator to be short, effective, <laughs> and impactful. Yeah, but well, for legislator. Uh, and okay. and this is why we're one last question extra charters as well. Okay, one last question uh, regarding the the unicorns. Is that uh, an app or uh, something that uh, is installed by a, a service provider? Uh, how how does that work? So uh, it's both. In fact, it's it's an add-on which is free on four platforms: Word, WordPress. Chrome, Edge, and Explorer, and, and okay. Firefox. And then uh, okay. for companies, we, we have uh, uh, conversation devices or spaces, i.e., which are internalizing chat mm -hmm. networks. It's you know it's it's very easy to recreate because it's it, you just have it's 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 one on one. Okay. You just have to replace. Uh, and we, we have a list in, in, in two languages, if you want, a list of the worst words of threats that you can think about, uh, slander. And you put it in the machine, yeah. and each time mm -hmm. he sees, yeah. insult, you know, like, a, insult. like an insult, you would select mm -hmm. what it will uh, be converted into. And we selected uh, rabbits, unicorns, respect zone logos, and giraffes as well, and penguins. And it's it's really upsetting okay. for a hater to hate and not to yeah, to see the right result of the hate and to get a, a unicorn in place. <laughs> so it, 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 it I it's imagine really saying I hate you, and instead of the word yes. hate, oh, I love it. Yes. Uh, like a big hug. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so so, yeah, so that can this be is why we are, we, are, we are we are trying to work on on how to how to stimulate uh, what is left of intelligence in the worst haters. Okay, okay. Well, Claudio Moraes, uh, you, you got uh, a, a group of fans here in Portugal already. Uh, Claudio Moraes is saying, uh, very grateful, mm -hmm. Philippe, for your brilliant work and presentation. We are looking forward to have Respect Zone in Portugal. And uh, as we said today, uh, we are beginning a, a partnership, so uh, it will be uh, available uh, shortly and we'll work uh, together. Usually, to end these sessions, Philip, we ask uh, our guests for uh, some sort of a recommendation or advice or a tip that uh, they can leave us with. Uh, our audience is comprised mostly uh, of uh, parents, uh, teachers, educators, and also uh, uh, technicians that work with children at risk, uh, psychologists uh, and professionals like that. So, but before you leave us uh, your uh, piece of advice, I'll give you one minute or two to, to think about it, because I have to introduce uh, the remaining sessions that uh, we'll be having tomorrow and Saturday, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow we'll be having uh, a guest from uh, Portugal, and uh, she is <laughs> Teresa Paula Marques, and she'll be talking with us about hate in social media and its emotional uh, impact, how to lead with haters, how to deal with haters, and how to, to prevent hate uh, online. Uh, she'll be talking to us about her own personal uh, experience because she's someone who has some uh, media uh, exposure 
and got uh, some backlash regard, uh, because she participated on a TV show that didn't please everybody. And uh, that's tomorrow at 9.30 uh, p.m. Lisbon time. And the following day, that's uh, Saturday, we'll be having our final session uh, at 9.30 p.m. as well, uh, <clears throat> in which uh, we'll be analyzing uh, the sessions, that, the 35 th sessions that we had this month, uh, how, what uh, our guests uh, presented, uh, how our uh, views on what was presented, and also some uh, perspectives uh, for uh, the future, um, how this event can uh, evolve. So basically, this is it, Philip, uh, and we look forward to, to hear your final uh, comment, uh, suggestion, advice, or tip, or recommendation. So, so my piece of advice would be for your audience to uh, try to uh, take ownership of our tools and make them yours, i.e. it's not uh, one size fits all. Uh, we propose some tracks and orientation and the idea is to, to reconstruct them. The idea is to show them, to, to adapt them, even to transform them. And this is what we expect from all the users. I'm so glad to be able to call you both your excellency as ambassador of uh, Respect Zone in, mm -hmm. in Portugal. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, but, you know, use uh, Sonia and Tito to, to uh, try to see, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Because when mm -hmm. we work with schools, we have this uh, memorandum, which is called um, uh, Welcoming Pack for Schools. And it's 48 okay. pages, and you will not believe it, but the 48 pages is not linked with our tool. It's what the, mm -hmm. what the students and the professor have escalated us back to the NGO, which we just select and, uh, and do the triage, and we gather them and we select the one which we think are the most uh, useful to be shared back, and we redistribute them to the users. Remember that when we had municipalities, and I didn't mention it, we had municipalities being respect zone, including large ones, like the town of mm -hmm. Angers, or a, a vicinity of Brussels named Voluvé saint pierre mm -hmm. or chevry cossigny near Paris. You know, they were the one to say, this is what we need, not for the online website of the municipality, but for the town. In when when, mm -hmm. when you drive in these towns, it's a Angers respect zone. And this is exactly the kind of thing we want you to invent, basically, because respect zone is like an open source creative common piece. And of course, we have, uh, as an NGO, we have a business model when we work with uh, uh, companies or with uh, entities, mm -hmm. they pay um, uh, an affiliation fee as a trademark mm -hmm. use, but it's free for yeah. every individual. So it's free mm -hmm. and uh, creative commons. And, and my message to you is, you know, try it, experience it, and make it magnificently better thanks to your imagination. And let's share it back so that we can develop it in the Thank other you. countries, in the other users, and invent what kind of world we want for our kids and ourselves, uh, which I think would need more respect than what we see today. Absolutely. Philip, uh, I don't know if Sonia has uh, any additional uh, questions. No, no, no. I just uh, want to thank you so much to be here with us today. Thank you. And yeah, thank you to you. And, and we look forward to activate this partnership. Yeah. So it's yeah. not only a press release tomorrow. No. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to, to work together, to work live together, together to, yes. to, to drink respect together. It's going to be <laughs> fun, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Philip, thanks a lot, thanks not only lot. For, for accepting our invitation, like for giving us uh, your time, and uh, for also for uh, how much we've learned uh, with you. And as you said, we look for uh, put our train on tracks so that uh, our partnership uh, finds success. 
and as we can see uh, there's already uh, interest not only from schools but i'm sure also from municipalities and i'm sure also uh, from com companies so for everyone uh, watching us uh, either on facebook youtube or periscope remember we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 9 30 uh, and uh, see you tomorrow thank you everybody bye-bye Bye, Philippe. Thank you. Bye, Philippe.